This is Donald with True Glass, and today we're talking about probably one of the best things you can have for breakfast, lunch, dinner, anything you want. This is both uh, great for getting you started in a day uh, professionally as well as personally. We're making cowboy coffee and cast iron cornbread. Uh, we'll start off with the cornbread ingredients. This looks like a lot, it's actually very simple. We've got uh, cornmeal, flour, a bowl for both of those to go in. Uh, sugar, uh, it's debatable. <laughs> you talk to certain people in the South, you don't put sugar in it, but we have kids, so if we want to hide vegetables in cornbread or deli meat or whatever it is, sugar is key for that. Uh, of course, your milk, bacon grease, you should always have this on hand. Um, salt, uh, one egg for the size we're making. We're making a little sample cast iron version today, um, a little extra bacon powder. Uh, whole milk, um, there's no reason to ever buy skim milk, I don't care what people tell you, I'm something like a doctor. And then vinegar, this is going to turn regular milk into buttermilk. So I'll get all this organized, we'll be right back to actually show you how to add it, how I do it, and just a heads up, if you want an actual recipe for cups and teaspoons, that kind of thing, this ain't the video for you, we're doing this the way your grandma and granddaddy did, so stay tuned and uh, we'll start mixing it up. Alright, so here's your, again, grandma and granddaddy's way of cooking. There is no measurement here. Roughly, I'll give you a, a basic idea. This is two to one. So, cornmeal. Oh, and I did wash my hands ahead of time. So, please wash your hands. Um, we've got basically two ish parts cornmeal. One part flour. It's best to do this when your significant other isn't home because you will make a mess. So that's basically your dry ingredients. Now we have um, baking powder. We're going to say we're going to add a little extra. That's a teaspoon for scientific purposes. Uh, a little salt. And then our sugar. Again, this is for, for the kids, for the children. Roughly four for a cup. So our dry ingredients are in, and when people always tell you you need to separate the wet and dry ingredients, literally shake everything to one side of the bowl, add your wet ingredients to the side that has nothing in it. Saves the bowl, saves dishes, saves work. So there's our egg. Whole milk again, please don't use skim milk. This is not designed to be healthy. So we pour about that much, and now we're going to turn it into buttermilk, just distilled vinegar. Splash of that, now we have buttermilk by, uh, by magic. Country magic, you now have buttermilk. So all we're going to do now is actually completely mix the wet ingredients as much as possible and then slowly start to incorporate them into the dry ingredients. Ready to go better. And um, if you'd like to get it right your first time, uh, and this is the part where I'm going to tell you that I'm, I'm not a doctor, I'm not telling you to go try your raw eggs and all that kind of stuff. If you do try that and get sick, uh, that's, that's on you at that point. So literally just simply taste what you have. If you want it sweeter, again, for, for kids or anything like that, you think you need more sugar, simple fix. Add your sugar if you'd like it a little saltier. Um, and at this point now, if you have ham, if you have jalapenos, sausage. My mother, she loves cheese. Put cheese in ours. Anything you want, you can now add to here. This entire time, we've kind of preheated our um, cast iron. We started on low. And this is your secret ingredient, bacon grease. Always keep it on the stove. Keep it ready. We're going to pour a little bit of grease in there. And all we're trying to do is coat the bottom, but have just enough left over 
so that the grease, once we pour the cornbread in, will actually rise on the top and maybe even fold in some. And this will help get you an actual crust. And we'll see how well our measurements did by how much we wasted. So anybody out there who wants to doubt my measurement skills or your grandma or granddaddy's measurement skills and wonder how they do that and it's not possible to get the right measurements, perfect size, ready to go. And the next step, we have uh, we have the oven that's been preheating right now. We like to run ours at uh, 425, so 425 is ready to go. We're gonna we're gonna skip ahead and uh, put her in the oven. Um, she's gonna go roughly 20 minutes or until I think it's edible. So pretty complex procedure, but here we go. We'll see you in a bit. All right. So the second part of this is the coffee. Um, depending on who you are, this could be the most critical part. Um, this is cowboy coffee. Uh, I didn't invent this clearly. Um, this is literally something that would have been hung over a fire years and years ago. I actually got the starter version of this from um, a guy on YouTube. His name is Cowboy Kent Rollins. If you want to look him up, I want to give credit where credit is due. This, this guy's an amazing cook, amazing chef, the whole nine yards. Um, literally, all we did is we bought a granite ware uh, coffee pot and we warmed our water up. And we're just going to add our coffee. Depending on what size you get, depends on how much coffee you, you want to go with, so I can't give you the exact specifications. At this point, if you left it right here on your stove, this is for current cooking, um, if you don't have a fire or whatever. The trick, and this is what I personally found out, is you need to move half of the coffee to the side of your eye. And what they'll do is, if you notice, the coffee was going to literally boil over, and the first time I made this, we actually boiled so much coffee over that it was on the stove, it was inside the stove, it was on spatulas. We actually got this on our pug. Um, this was actually on the dogs the first time I made this. So the trick to that is if you move the granite pot off to the side, you will get a hard rolling bowl. And that's the most important thing. You have to boil your coffee. Uh, when you use a drip coffee uh, system, which 99% of people use, your coffee never gets hot enough to actually completely get all of your flavor out of your coffee beans and it also never kills the acidity. I mean there's a lot of people who drink coffee that say oh my gut bothers me or I get indigestion that kind of thing happens. If you boil the coffee, if it gets, I think scientifically it has to be over 200 to 212 degrees um, to actually get the true flavor out and to kill the acidity in coffee. Using this system you are going to boil the coffee um, I mean, clearly you can see that, that it's got a rolling bowl and what will happen is we added dry coffee beans just to water. That's all we added. Water, coffee. But what happens is, as you can see, it's going to keep rolling and it's going to actually bring in all the grinds. It will keep boiling the entire time. This needs to happen for the minimum of two minutes. You can let it boil as long as you'd like. Um, depends on how big of a rush I am, what time I got up in the morning, uh, what time my wife needs the coffee. Uh, we usually go two to six minutes, um, but she'll look like that and you know she'll just keep right on uh, boiling coffee and that's I mean, that's really the only process to make cowboy coffee but this is true cooking you can't put this on the stove you can't walk off type emails play with the kids you can't do this type of thing I get up at four in the morning to you know get some scripture read I get up at four in the morning to go ahead and get this coffee started you can't just this isn't a side project this is quality coffee and the kicker of this is we use Aldi brand coffee. This is some of the cheapest coffee that you can buy. It's like five to seven dollars for this entire can. But yet I haven't had a single person try this coffee that said it wasn't the best cup they've ever had. And it's not because of the beans, it's because of the cooking process. So literally we'll just let this sit here and go um, for another two or three minutes until we feel like we're, uh, we're ready to go or we're tired of filming. Um, that's that's really it. So we'll, we'll cut back to when this is completely finished and we'll show you the process to actually finish it off because we still have coffee beans floating around and we're going to show you the trick to actually get the coffee beans, well they're grounds actually at this point, to get the coffee grounds to the bottom so when you pour a cup of coffee you get a fresh perfectly cooked cup of coffee that has no grinds in it. So we'll be back in uh, just a little bit to finish it out. Oh and also cornbread's about ready, we'll show you that at the same time. Cornbread just came out. Um, just an explanation of why it looks this way. Because you add bacon grease, it depends on how much or how little you add. Um, if you add just the right amount of bacon grease, it will actually stay on the edges. So you will have a perfectly formed piece of cornbread. Uh, we care about how it tastes and how fancy it looks. So 
these sections that you see that look a little deformed are basically because bacon grease got into that area. For me, that's that's flavor. That's we're good with that. Um, one of the key things I like to do if I add sugar, if I'm going to make a jalapeno version or a ham or sausage, whatever I'm making, a uh, crackling, I don't feel the need to do this. But again, since this is kind of more formulated for my children, uh, there is sugar. This is a sweeter, similar to like your Jiffy style cornbread. We add uh, butter to the top, and all we're trying to do now is again add a little bit more flavor. We'll let this melt in, and then we'll also finish it with the salt that we had. And this is just, because this cornbread actually is gonna be quite thick even though it's a small pan. So we'll top it with a little bit of salt for finishing. And this is honestly just giving you a contrast, sweet, salty, buttery, that type of thing. And this is your ultimate test to see how well you did. Uh, it turns out these things stay very hot. Use a rag, a holder of some sort. We'll flip her out and see. That's what we have, so. We've got a good crust, we've got good crust on the sides. Even though this is hot, we should let it sit a little bit. We're making a video, we don't have time for these things. We're gonna go ahead and cut it and see what it looks like. You've got a nice full portion serving here. Cornbread, extremely airy, extremely fluffy. Basically, we just made a cake of cornbread that everyone can eat. Uh, and right about now, coffee's about to be finished, so yeah, we'll just cut right here, come right back, and we'll show you how to finish off the coffee. And while this is cooling, your coffee should be ready to go, and you got yourself a hey, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. We'll be right back. So the last step, uh, we're, we're again rushing this a little bit. You'd like to let this cool a good bit because it was literally boiling. Um, the only trick now is sometimes you can actually, uh, depending on how high you fill the water up, you, you want to stop at the middle of the spout or the bottom of the spout of your container. But even then, you can actually pull coffee grinds back into the spout, so you want to add a little bit of water to force any grinds that might be there back down. So hopefully that took care of that. And then the next thing, this is the trick to actually get the coffee grinds, because people are saying, wait a minute, you just added dry coffee grinds to boiling water, it's simply moving around. This cold water will actually shock and grab the coffee grinds, and it will literally drag them to the bottom. Heat rises, so this cold water will sink. So all we're gonna do is add our cold water from the tap down in the coffee. And again, we are, we are rushing this process, so we'll see how she pours, but you should be able to see that we have no coffee grinds of any kind poured out into a fresh cup of coffee. We've literally extracted the most possible flavor and killed off any acidity in the coffee bean or the coffee grinds, I should say. And there you have it. And so for the finished product, you now have coffee and we couldn't help but try it. So coffee and, uh, and cornbread. Good to go. Uh, if you got any questions about how to measure this out or what to do, I can try to be more specific. Wherever you find this video at, leave a comment. I'll be happy to reply help you out in any way if you would like a specific video on how we make our jalapeno bacon cornbread anything like that um, I mean clearly this is I mean we clean windows gutters we pressure wash we do those things but I mean we live life we try to do the best we can help out as many people as we can and the way I grew up the best way to help anyone is buy them into uh, to your home and feed them take care of them the best you can so yeah any way we can help even though it might seem odd you want to talk about cornbread this window cleaner will do that so this is uh, Donald Hazard with True Glass. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, it's 706 832 4181. We're at truegloscleaners.com. Uh, stop by, give us a talk.